Okay. Uh, today I have with me Professor Krithi Ramabritham. He is Vijay and Sita Vashi Chair Professor at IIT Bombay in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. Uh, today he gave a talk on smart grids and he took us to the future scenario of energy scenario of India and the whole world. But he has done much more than that. He has used ICT technology for various applications for socio-economic issues of uh, and uh, I would talk to him regarding his journey from his childhood to today. We would know more about him. Uh, how did he come to this land and what are his ideas in the future? Why did you plan to come back to India? Whenever somebody asks this question, I say that the day I left for the US, I knew I'm coming back. Okay. Uh, that was in 1978. Uh -huh. It only took me 20 years to realize that that uh, I'd spent long enough time in the U.S. In the U.S. and therefore... Right, so I did my PhD at University of Utah. Utah. Mm -hmm. And then from there I came to University of Massachusetts for my assistant professor job. Mm -hmm. uh, got my tenure, became associate professor, became a pro professor. And uh, then I said I don't want to be buried in the U.S. So you want to give back something to India and therefore you came back? That's a big word. Okay. Um, <laughs> but we wanted to, number one, raise our children in India. In India. Um, and number two, I had done whatever I thought I could and I wanted to for the US. Mm -hmm. And uh, some opportunity arose to test the waters. I came on sabbatical to IIT Madras, mm -hmm. where I did my B.Tech and M.Tech in the, my earlier days, earlier days yeah. so they were quite willing to put me up or put up with me <laughs> in the case maybe and I did a Bharat Yatra you did Bharat Yatra that was right. great I did I wanted to actually there was a an, there is an organization called uh, Office of Naval Research in the US okay. which funds computer science research ah. they had funded my work mm -hmm. and they had a plan to understand the goings on in the research arena mm -hmm. in India so they were looking for some volunteers and I had just decided to come to India for my sabbatical. So, so this in Bharat Yatra, where, which cities that you visited? Oh, I visited all the IITs, all the major labs, okay. which had anything to do with computer science. I came to TAFR, uh -huh. I came to BRC mm -hmm. uh, in Bombay, I came to IIT Bombay. But uh, did you visit any villages during that period or? No, no not no. really, not really. This was a different purpose. Different purpose. Different purpose. purpose. I had to... institutions. My charter was to write about IIT, uh, about computer science research in India yeah. at that period. You have been using this information and communication technology for agriculture, so I'd like to know more about it, what exactly you have done. Okay. So one of the driving forces behind uh, what we have done, or driving challenges, if you will, is that our farmers work very hard, but uh, they don't get access to the kind of information that's required to convert the hard work into a monetary benefit, a commensurate mon monetary benefit. And that can happen only through use of technology. That's what we realized because we in the cities have uh, fetched for ourselves and gotten for ourselves the benefits of IT and ICT uh, in ways which were unimaginable 10 years ago. So we wanted to bring the same benefits of information communication technologies for the farmer. So this is what the scenario is. They have a problem. They still have to walk in many cases about 5-10 kilometers to a nearby Krishi Vigyan Kendra, like extension center. And uh, often when they go there, the expert who's supposed to answer their question is not there. Okay. And so they go back empty handed. Oh, I see. So what we wanted to do was to say that the farmer needs to do work which he has to do, like in the field. Information should go to him or her on a demand-driven basis. When they have in a the field, is it or into the f into his backyard? Into his backyard. Backyard, and he should be able to take his backyard to the expert. Oh, both ways. Both ways. Uh -huh. Take his problem to the expert. Uh -huh. Make the expert come to his farm. So All how without does he people take his moving. His backyard to the Okay, Experts? perfect, perfect question. If you do a fast forward 10 years oh. from when we started, are equipped with all sorts of gadgets. 
cameras, voice recordings, real-time monitoring capability through sensors uh -huh. of temperature and, uh -huh. and other parameters. So if we can gather this information online in real time and make them available to a, an, an expert who has the answers in his, mm -hmm. from his background and in his, at his fingertips mm -hmm. and bring those answers back to the farmer mm -hmm. using the same cell phone medium, mm -hmm. nothing like it. Mm -hmm. And the beauty is that all of this can be done without having anybody move from any point to travel five kilometers to the nearby extension center. Okay. We can educate them on on solutions which they may need at some future point in time uh -huh. by sending them very simple SMS messages or alerts saying pest is about to attack your area because But uh, they don't use English language in their day-to-day -day lives so how do they do it? Okay, that's again a very good question. Uh, see, most of us communicate symbolically. So for example, if I teach you that the term, the icon for H-I-G-H, uh high, -huh. mm -hmm. means Zyada. I teach you once, uh -huh. I teach you twice. Third uh -huh. time you see it, you'll say, when this sequence of symbols appear together, it means the temperature is going to be high. They'll learn very quickly. And symbols are very good for communicating a very short piece of information. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And most of the messages are going to be uh, typically short. So everything comes together very beautifully. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that we should not try or we have not tried using multilingual content itself. Some of the modern phones have Unicode capability for display purposes. Mm -hmm. You can exploit that where available. But it should not become a prerequisite because otherwise you'll miss out on mm -hmm. helping a lot of people. So now what perspective that you have today which others may not have, if you can tell us? Perspective is that we can do it, so that it might be, not just simply IT. It is not impossible, it is I am possible. That's correct. Um, it will take time mm -hmm. to gather the forces around you mm -hmm. and uh, have sympathetic well-wishers mm -hmm. who think like you. The only downside is that uh, it takes longer to do anything here and especially if you want to carry some project which has got a clientele far removed from cities. To tell you the truth, the reality is that compared to the days when I came back in 1998 to now, the number of at least IIT students mm -hmm. who are going abroad has come down in all down. Now there's a good side and a bad side to it. Mm -hmm. The good side is they stay in India at least soon after their B.Tech days. Uh, some of them go, do go back to academia, especially doing PhDs elsewhere. Some of them go into management, which is not a bad thing or a good thing. It's just that we have spent a lot of energy in training them in technology. Engineers and technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what you need uh, is both people who can innovate at the technology end and manage the innovation. Mm -hmm. We can't simply have managers. Um, the Actually, the downside of today's uh, reality is that many people are not in their domain. Mm -hmm. Mechanical engineer becomes a manager okay. of an IT mm -hmm. project. Um, based on two years of management education. Yes. Uh, again, not nothing good or bad. Having an interdisciplinary background is good, but we need me mechanical engineers, just we as need much as engineers also. managers also. Is that one thing that you would like to tell to young people? Think uh. big. Keep a notebook with you. This is a very mundane suggestion. At the end of the day, take five minutes to write down what you learned that day. Uh -huh. And if you can't write three things which you learned new that day, uh, I'm sorry to say your day has been wasted. I think that's great. So thank you very much for Ramal Thumb. Thank you.